<laughs> this is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. This show is brought to you by Pet King Brands, the makers of Zymox and Oratine. It's Behave with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces, their perfectly pampered pets, and who's walking who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the All Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Now, my special guest today wears many collars in the pet and business world. She's as comfortable behind a microphone as maybe walking an energetic Labrador puppy dog down the street. And she's the former winner of the Business of the Year honor by the National Association of Professional Pet Sitters. Phew, that's a lot to say in one mouthful. Oh, yeah, she's also pretty fun and inspiring. Please give pause and applause to the host of the new show on Pet Life Radio. It's called Covered in Pet Hair, the one, the only, Isabel Alvarez Arida. Woo! Welcome to the show, Isabel. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. Well, I think you're a great person. And uh, hey, guys, speaking of being covered in pet hair, we've got a lot to cover with Isabel. (laughs) And guess what? No lint roller is required. But we got to pay for the show first. So we're going to take this quick commercial break. You guys know the drill. Sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a pause. Four furry ones actually sit and stay. All behave. We'll be right back. Pause up, everyone. Arden Moore here, the host of the O Behave Show. Raise your paw if you love frozen desserts. I know I do. And so do my canine trio of Bujo, Kona, and Emma. They drool with delight when offered this sweet treat. And now all dogs will have plenty to yap about. That's because Ben & Jerry's has just unleashed not one, but two doggy desserts. Your dog can enjoy the Ponce Mix made with peanut butter and pretzel swirls or Rosie's Batch made with pumpkin and mini cookies, or put a little of both in their bowl. Yum, yum for the tum-tum. Now, when you treat yourself to a bowl of your favorite Ben & Jerry's ice cream, mine is the classic Cherry Garcia, your dogs can enjoy the Ponce Mix or Rosie's Batch or a blend of both. Do you know what time it is? Why, it's Ben and Jerry's time. I see happy Bujo, Kona, and Emma heading my way. Check out the Ben and Jerry's doggy desserts at benjerry.com. That's B-E-N-J-E-R-R-Y.com. Pause up. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now, back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the All Behave show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Our special guest today is Isabel Alvarez Arida. I was, I was doing some math. You know, you have nine vowels in your name. I did not know that, but now I do know that. So thank you for doing math for me. My rule is that I only do math if I'm being paid to do it. So thank you for doing that free math for me. So your 18 letters in your full name, half of them are vowels, a lot of A's. I'm just wondering, uh, do you think that, you know, if you were on Wheel of Fortune, you know, maybe Vanna White would have to file for overtime pay to turn the letters? (laughs) Well, I just think I get an A plus then for so many A's in my name. I like that. So I have never counted the vowels in any guest name prior to you. And we've been on the air since 2007. We're the longest running pet podcast show on the planet continuously. And so I just wanted to give you that honor, Isabel, because you're the first one I've ever felt the need to count vowels. That is amazing. I'm honored just to be on your show, but even more so now that I know you're paying so much attention to the vowels in my name. I mean, come on. Thank you. 
Well, guys, she's quite a gal. And what I like is all the things that you do for pets and people. But equally important is you know how to reinvent yourself. I think I first met you several years back when you were running a professional pet sitting company called The Wag Pack. And that was based in Alexandria, Virginia, correct? Yes, ma'am. That's right. That was a lifetime ago or so it feels like it. Well, now I don't think she's in the witness protection program, but now <laughs> you're in El Paso, Texas. Yes. So I'm a military spouse. And oh, so in the past okay. five years, we have lived in three different places. Four, if you count when I went to Miami to stay with my family while my husband deployed. So four moves in five years is a lot of moves. Hopefully El Paso is our last move. Uh, my husband is- What branch is Chris in? He is army. He's an Ooh. officer in the army and he's about two and a half years from retirement. Nice. Awesome. Well, my wife, Julie, was a combat MP in the army, staff sergeant, and for nine years. So she will definitely salute Chris when, uh, if we ever meet. Likewise, he will do the same. Okay. All right. But let's get into it because there are many shows on Pet Life Radio. And I love the fact that you have kind of a unique niche because the show is called Covered in Pet Hair. But you're the first host I've seen that is putting the show on Pet Life Radio and on YouTube. And I just think I heard what rank is uh, Chris, by the way? He's a major. Major Chris. I think I heard little Mia. Is that your little girl? Mila. Yeah, Mila's Mila. over here playing with electrical cords. Oh, and, hey, only 15 <laughs> months old. Mila, do you want to reach your second birthday? Leave the yes, cords she does. alone. It's not plugged in, I promise. I'm supervising this as we chat. And this is why I have a, a show on Pet Life Radio where I drink because I, I wear so many hats that I have to like unwind with a cocktail with my colleagues at some point in the day or the week because being a parent, being a pet parent, being, you know, just an army spouse. And moving, moving, moving all the time. Oh my gosh. Things. And you know what? You, I still hear joy in your voice. I don't hear frustration. I don't hear, eh. I hear, hey, I got this. I have this. But there are days when my three-year-old says to me, Mama, take a deep breath. Your three-year-old is counseling you? Oh, my gosh. Well, because I counsel him, right? So when he's having big emotions, I tell him, Noah, take a big deep breath. And so now he's old enough. He's almost four that he tells me, Mama, take a big deep breath. I like him. I already <laughs> now I can't wait till he's legal so we can have a drink with him, right? No, it's gonna be fun. I know. He actually wants to make cocktails. Every time that I make a cocktail for my show, I have my cocktail shaker, my bottles, and he's like, I wanna shake it. And I'm like, shake no, it. actually, I think it's illegal for you to touch any of this. But I give him his like his Kitty metal cocktail. tumbler. Yeah, yeah. And I put ice in it and I let him shake with us. Well, see, that's cool. That's cool. So let's talk about the show. I love the name Covered in Pet Hair. And I've got to tell you, in my lifetime, I had a great dog named Chipper, who was a husky golden retriever. So you got that hair color. And then for many years, I had a Bernese mountain dog mix named Bujo with black hair. I couldn't win either way. I live with lint rollers. I pray my vacuum doesn't die on me. And I'm always having to do the little sneaker scoot across the, the rug to pick up the droppings of hair before guests come. So yes, tell us absolutely. how you got the name covered in pet hair. I like it. Well, I mean, I was a professional dog walker for many, many, many years. And I had two dogs of my own hound shepherd mixes that shed like crazy. So I was perpetually covered in dog hair specifically. And then when I was pet sitting, I was completely covered in cat hair because most of the cats, you know, are like rubbing through your legs and they're getting all, and I love my active wear. My black leggings were always covered in fur, like an excessive amount to the point where I gave up on lint rollers. So you don't even have to worry about shaving your legs anymore, right? Oh, no, at you all. You just no, blame I mean, it on pet hair. My only concern these days is getting my kid to school without the pet hair. Everybody else in the house is fine covered in pet hair, but I don't want him to be like the fuzzy kid at school getting, Aww. you know, made fun of. So we dress him right before he leaves to school. Other than that, I don't care. I've embraced it. I am covered in pet hair. I will perpetually be covered in pet hair. And I like being covered in pet hair because that means that there's a pet in my vicinity, right? And that's where I'm happiest. 
Well, not only do you know pets, and I did tee you up in the beginning, you know, you were a business of the year. That's not a title to take lightly by the NAPS, uh, National Association of Professional Pet Sitters. You were on the board. So the big award came in 2012, which is kind of cool. Tell us about the WAG Pack, and then we're going to get into the pandemic and how you pivoted. That's the word. That's the word in COVID time. How do we pivot? Yes, I did a big pivot. But yes, the WAG Pack was founded in 2008 because I needed a dog walker. When I was in the corporate world, I had just gotten Titan, who is going to be 14 in a Ooh. couple months. Yeah, Happy hopefully he'll birthday, make it to Titan. 14. Yeah, yeah. Pause crossed. Um, so he inspired me to start my business because I was looking for a dog walker in Northern Virginia where you would think there were a million dog walkers and there were, but they couldn't call me back. They were so busy. They were so oh. slammed with requests that they couldn't call me back. And I had been wow. pet sitting for fun and I was a huge pet lover. I started volunteering in rescue when I was 17 years old. So I was like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to call people back. So I did. So I started my business. I called people. Very back. good. Good. Good business strategy. Everybody right? call the person back. Yeah, correct. Correct. In sales. I learned that you just have to call people back half the time. They're ready to buy. Well, wait a minute. I did a little digging. Uh, your first job was actually at age 14, wasn't it? It was. Did I do it my was. homework? You did. I absolutely started working in retail. I was a salesperson at the Silver Lady in Coconut Grove in Florida. It was a little silver shop where she imported silver jewelry. Oh, good. I'm so glad you clarified. I was getting a little worried about what the shop was all about. <laughs> what, was Wait, what did you think? I wasn't sure. <laughs> it was a silver jewelry shop. She imported, oh, okay. she was Mexican and she imported beautiful Mexican jewelry. Nice. And so nice. I was 14 years old. And this is an anecdote that you'll enjoy. I was so efficient, apparently, at 14 that the lady didn't even think about the fact that I was so young and she gave me keys to the store. And one day I came home, my mom picks me up because I wasn't even driving yet. And I'm like something about like, I have to lock the store. And my mom's like, you have keys to the store? She had to call my boss and say, I know my daughter's very efficient, but please don't give her something that like such a huge responsibility. She's only 14. <laughs> so wow, it was a great experience. Now tell me Noah doesn't have keys to any of your businesses yet. Not yet, but he kind of runs the show here. So I mean, he is management material. I'm going to tell you that right now. All right. So you're running the WAG pack and you had like up to 20 pet sitters at one time and I mean, it's a hard job. Guys, I have mucho, mucho respecto for anybody that's a professional pet sitter. Why? You give up your weekends, holidays, and you're covered in pet hair. You get the lovely task of picking up poop and scooping poop. So, you know, it's not always glamorous, but boy, are you guys needed. So, I mean, tell us about the business and then tell us what happened when COVID hit. Well, the business was thriving. I was actually running the business remotely with the help of a business partner since 2015. And we wow. were at 20 employees and I only kept it at 20 employees because I wasn't there and I didn't want to overrun my, my business and my business partner with responsibilities when I wasn't physically there to handle it. The goal for me was always to go back to the Northern Virginia area and resume my face-to-face -face, you know, operations, not remote. It, remote was supposed to be temporary. Well, with Major Chris in the Army, you have to go when the Army tells you to go, right? Right. And the Army told us we'd get back to D.C., but we're still waiting. But I, you know what? Now that I don't have the WAG pack, I don't have motivation to go back to D.C. And now we can really, truly just enjoy the Army life and kind of not knowing where we live. But um, uh, <laughs> before COVID hit, we had just redone our website. We had just gotten new software. We were rocking and rolling. I mean, we've been yeah. rocking and rolling since 2008. And NAPS, you guys were one of the most successful successful perennial pet sitting companies in NAPS. So, you know, yes, th you were no you. slouch. Thank you. I like to think that even though I'm no longer involved in the pet sitting industry, I left it better for having been yes, a part of it. I'd like to think that um, I made really great connections. I mean, I was involved in NAPS. NAPS was so crucial. Well, you were a board member for a while. Yes. Right? Yeah. NAPS was so great for my success. I immediately joined NAPS. And you know why I joined NAPS? I didn't even know about it when I opened my business. My web designer just Googled like something like a logo to put on my website when she was designing it. And it was, I was a new business owner and I was like, okay, well, it's already on there. I might as well just join. And then I found like this huge, like wealth of information 
that she just stumbled upon. And I became, I was a volunteer and then I became a board member. I was awarded not only the business of the year award, I'm going to pat myself on the back. And I, I say that I also won the president's award in 2014. Oh, that's right. That's right. Sherry Sahowski gave that to me. Well, you have a lot to thank. You have to thank the Academy for that, right? I do. Exactly. They're and my the academy, academy for sure. Yes, for sure. They are the equivalent. All right. So you're cruising, you're grooving, you know, oh, man, everybody we needs a pet sitter in the beltway. Boom. <laughs> 2020. Yeah. So 2020 rolls around and uh, I shut down the business. I was, it's funny because I shut down the business the day before the local government did because I was concerned for my employees' safety. And I hired right. a lot of high risk employees. Most of my team, especially dog walking, were retirees. So oh. for me, sending them out, not knowing what was coming, my sister lives in Spain. So I had kind of an insider's like experience on what oh. they were going through. Yeah, that's so right. I it said, their we're first. shutting down. And the next day, the local government said we're shutting down. <laughs> wow. But they shut down in Virginia for three months. Okay. And so immediately when I found out that we're shutting down for three months, knowing how transient Northern Virginia is, knowing that summer was coming and midday dog walks kind of fall a little bit, it, it, it's, it's a seasonal business. So right. knowing that people weren't going to be traveling midday dog walks come July, August, we're going to be lower than usual. I was seeing a six month period where we were going to have zero revenues. And we had a business office. We had an administrative office in Northern Virginia because I wasn't there. I couldn't have a home office. I had to have oh. an administrative office where my staff, it was kind of self self-service. They would, they all had keys. They would come in, get what they needed that we, we would train them in there. We would interview in there. It was a wonderful, beautiful office that we took so much pride in preparing in 2015. And so luckily our uh, landlords let us out of our lease. Oh, good. and by letting us out of our lease, being so gracious and wonderful as they were, they left us without an operate, you know, a place to operate the business out of, right? Um, which is great financially, but impossible to run a business remotely if I don't have a place to bring my team into. This is a hard call you had to make. You know what? It really wasn't because okay. I have I have to, I always talk about my mom in my interviews, and it's just because it just happens. I called my mom immediately, and I said this is what's happening. And she asked me, would you start this business today? And I was like, of course not. I don't live in the area. Mm -hmm. We're in the middle of a pandemic. She's like, well, then you have your answer. And it, I did. I had my answer immediately. I knew that there was no longevity here, not being remote. Had I been right. local, I would have pivoted in a different way. Yeah. But I like your mom. Can I call her for some advice sometime? My mom is amazing. Uh, okay. Yes, she, right. she should Go. retire and be a life coach, I think. Yes, she's wonderful. But she really did give me that advice. And I knew in my gut that it was going to be an impossibility for me to revamp my business a year later from afar. If I yeah. was there, totally different conversation. So I, I when I and when I announced my business closing, I said to all my fellow pet sitters, do not make this decision for yourselves based on my decision. This was mostly made because I am not local. I am not right. local to my business service area. And that therefore that adds a whole layer of complications for me to revamp my business and to pivot. So we had to shut down. We're actually in the process right now of closing the business with the IRS and all those things. And there's still a lot to do. But before we closed down, we sold our client paperwork and we sold our employee documents and all of our training. Good. So That's we, assets. Like, Yes. And I sold it for a very reasonable, almost too reasonable amount because I wanted to share that with people that wanted to improve their business while they were, you know, dealing with COVID and having that time to invest in their business. So there's no hard feelings. It was pretty traumatic last year when it was happening. But now when I look back, I'm like, everything kind of really worked out for right. the better. Hey guys, we're speaking with Isabel Alvarez Arida, and she is the host of the show called Covered in Pet Hair. It's on Pet Life Radio. We're going to find out how she pivoted from a rocking professional pet sitting business owner to now talking to people behind the mic all over in the pet world, from people that know about Roddy's to poop to even, um, I think you've got, oh, even a wedding pet planner. So we're going to talk about some of your guests right after we take this commercial break. So sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Hey, pet pals, Arden Moore here. Welcome to spring and summer, the onset of itchy skin and allergy season. Is your pet dealing with itchy skin, hot spots, and even ear infections? Help is here. 
It is Zymox shampoo and conditioner to the rescue. Not only is this a shampoo and conditioner great for general bathing and healthy skin support, but it is the go-to shampoo and conditioner for itchy pets. Its patented enzyme formula is loaded with antibacterial and antifungal properties to ease the itch and stop the scratching. And as an added bonus, Zymox shampoos and conditioners give off a lovely, pleasant non-medicine smell. For over 20 years, Zymox products have been helping pets find relief for many health conditions. All Zymox skin and ear products get their effectiveness from enzymes. Zymox contains no antibiotics and no petroleum byproducts, just the soothing power of enzymes. Zymox can be found at your veterinary clinic, most pet specialty stores, and online. To learn more, dash over to www.zymox.com. That's Z-Y-M-O-X for your pet's sake. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, this is Amy Schumer. You're listening to Art and More on Pet Life Radio, where they keep it real and make everyone feel like they're pets. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to OBHAVE. Here's Art. Welcome back to the OBHAVE show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. We have the brilliant Isabel Alvarez Arada on the show in the house. Well, she's in El Paso. I'm in Dallas. But the show, Covered in Pet Hair. We talked a little bit about uh, you don't care about lint rollers. Life happens. Hair happens. But how did you make that pivot from being a very successful business owner in the pet sitting world to taking on the show on Pet Life Radio? I think it was all mostly luck and a little bit of intuition. I uh, was watching a late night style show and I was enjoying it. And something came to me and said, pet industry needs something fun and educational at the same time. Something where they can get access to experts and meet the people, the players in the industry, but also in a fun, casual way. So it was just inspiration that came from, you know, taking a moment to watch some TV. And luckily, I, uh, I thought about it and I called my friend Tim Link. I said, Tim, can you get on a call with me so I can kind of share something that I'm thinking about and get your insights on it? And he said to me, you know, I'm having a call with my executive producer, Mark Winter, next week. Maybe I'll mention this idea that you have and maybe, you know, maybe you guys can chat about it. So it all kind of fell into place. Tim's a great guy. He is the host of Animal Rights. I've been on his show and vice versa. So what makes your show different, though, is you are recording it for the ears, but you also record it for the eyes. So tell us about these caricatures you have that are on YouTube. I love them. And I know you play drinking games, which I have to say I'm, I'm in. You had me at <laughs> Well, yeah. So I decided that I wanted to be more TV inspired. I obviously, I've had a podcast in the past. I love podcasting. I listen to podcasts all the time, but I also enjoy TV the visual aspect of it. So I figured this would be the perfect thing to blend and have access to twice as big an audience because not everybody wants TV, not everybody wants podcasting. So I thought it was a really good way to just reach more people. And it's fun because I like, like most people, I'm very social. So most of us that are on in any way, like on podcasts and interviewing people, I'm very social. So I really like to see people's faces and expressions and get to know them. So I figured I was going to see them anyway. I was going to ask them to be on video for me. So I figured why not just record like it, it, share it, edit, share it. Well, the other thing, I'm like you, you got to pivot and look for the positive. And for me, I wish I would have owned stock in uh, Zoom, like in uh, maybe fall of 19. But I like that we have gone to this format with Zoom because it is better to be able to see your guest and, and get their responses. We have had a lot of guests on my, my show, the Old Behave show, but I got to tell you, I think it just makes a better conversation, don't you? Absolutely. And I think the pandemic helped with that, right? Because now yeah. COVID-19 normalized meetings on Skype. And right. my favorite late night shows. Oh, yeah. Using Skype. Who's your favorite late night show host? Who do you like? Graham Norton. Oh, tell me why. He's just 
so you, British humor. He's yeah. dry and intelligent, super fun. I love his style. I just think he's great. And he just makes you feel like you're just in somebody's living room having a conversation. And what all about of his James guests. Gordon? I love him and I love the car, what with carpool karaoke. I love that. But I, I don't know. There's something. James is more, he's more friendly. Like I like the dry humor. Okay. All right. All right. So do you like dry wine or sweet wine? Dry wine. Okay. All right. Now I understand that you are multilingual. You obviously we've been confirmed. You speak English. <laughs> Yay. French. We. Oui. Yes. We. Oui. Spanish. Si. Si. Gato. Gato. More or less. I'm conversationally fluent. Pero. Pero. Yes. I speak. Okay. Pero. <laughs> yes, I speak dog for sure. How about baby? Baby? Oh, no, there's no, 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 <laughs> no. Me, me, me is like, no, they're like, mama. <laughs> Mila gets frustrated with me. I definitely don't speak toddler. Okay. Also, all right. All three right. year well, old. I don't speak three major. Um, okay, that's the toughest right. language I've ever battled. <laughs> so how, how did you get the nickname Toadie? Oh my goodness. How did you even find that? Yes. Um, did you know I was an investigative reporter for 20 years? That's so funny. Uh, yes, I did know that because I've listened to your show and I've followed you for years. But um, no, I did not know that you were going to find out my nickname. I gave that nickname to myself apparently as a baby. It's T-O-T-Y, correct? T-O-T-Y. Toti is the Tote, way that is. Yeah. Okay. And you know who else in the, you know who else that you probably know um, has the same nickname? And no. I was not named for her at all. Sofia Bergara from really? Modern Family. They wow. call her La Toti. And I'm La Toti too. What does La Toti mean? It means nothing. It was like a babble. And uh, people <laughs> would ask me when I was a, a baby, what's your name? And I would say Toti, Toti. And then it just stuck. My family's big on nicknames though. Okay. So like my daughter's name is Mila. Right. That went from Mila to Mila Lou to <laughs> Lou to now Lulu. So now she's Lulu. Okay. Why? Makes no sense. But what that's about how Noah? Operate. Does Noah have he's any bean. nicknames? He's Bean. Yeah. Don't tell his friends. Seriously. It's, well, uh, you know yeah. why? Because he was so long as a baby. He looked like a green bean. And I would always tell him in French, I'd be like, Arico, you're an Arico. Because I would like really make it like a green bean is Arico yeah. or bean is Arico. So in Spanish, it's verde. What would bean be in Spanish? Uh, judía verde. Oh, la, 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 la. okay. Good. All right. <laughs> I am trying so to I learn Spanish in Duolingo. So, um. Oh, my husband is doing the same. And he's, uh, do you have the play games all the time in there? Competitions um, and such? I don't do the competitions. I do the lessons and then they do the stories and they have the different voices and you got to guess what the conversation's about. And it's really funny. So I've been doing it during COVID. I've been trying to learn Spanish. So I can just say, estoy bien, a eh, too? <laughs> Muy bien, gracias. All right. I can just say, <laughs> yo quiero un cerveza, por favor. Yes. Uh, por favor. Sí. Sí. Exactly. So I'm learning all the key things, how to drink. And I had to learn to say when I went to the Mayan Riviera right before COVID, I had to say, uh, let's say, yo aprendo espanol despacio, por favor. Muy bien. Okay, because they were like rapido. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you know oh, what? Oh, oh. <laughs> Spanish is just like a very fast language for most of us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even when we think we're going slow, we're not at all. Well, I have a couple questions in Spanish because I know the grammar and the verb tensing, but I'm curious why the street name Cali, Cal, or whatever, Cali, Calle. 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 C A L L E. I sound Italian when I speak Spanish. Why is that Una Cali? even though it ends in an E and not an A. Okay, here's the other question for you. Cause you're no my idea, Spanish but there's expert. a lot of those things in English too, right? Like the homophones, yeah. like why, why is there, there sounds the same. It's kind of like that. They're just exceptions. Buenos dias, but buenas noches. Because noche is feminine and dia is masculine. All right, we're gonna have to have a drink yes. when it's safe to do so. And yes. I will make a cocktail of your dreams as a licensed bartender if you can help me nail the Spanish. Oh, I mean, I don't know if I'll help you nail the Spanish, but my best friend, Grace, is half Bolivian, half American, and she really grew up not speaking Spanish. But when she's okay. got a few drinks in her, her Spanish is the most fluent it ever is. So really, that's been, my, that's what's been holding me back, right? Yeah, I need that's to it. Drink you got to have some Spanish wine with it. 
Okay. All and right. it'll I all just come flowing. Hey, on your show, let's talk about your guests because you've you've been on the show. You launched this year, right? Or end of December. December. Mm -hmm. Right. So tell people a few of your favorite guests, and I'm going to make it easy for you by saying all of her guests are her favorites. These are just a few she wants to mention. How's that? Tactful? Yeah, that's perfect. Um, okay. So yeah, I have had some favorite guests. I guess my first show with Tim Link was my favorite just because he helped you launch. Yeah, he helped me launch and I've known him forever. And it was truly that social conversation that I was envisioning. I was thinking we all need to go to a bar with each other virtually. So like yeah. it was basically like we were at a conference or we were at a, an event and we were having a drink. And so that was probably my favorite just because it was so natural. Other ones I do have to research more. I didn't have to research anything for Tim. I've known him for years. And he's like, he's spoken to my dogs, you know, one-on-one -on -one virtually. Yeah, that's right. We got to tell people he is an amazing animal communicator. Yes. Exactly. So he's been speaking to my dogs and giving me the insights on all of their feelings and thoughts for years. So it was really nice. And then I did enjoy the wedding, the wedding yeah, show that Jenna you referred Rossi. to. I've met her at conferences, Jenna Reese, and I had no clue this woman had a role in weddings. I knew she was a great pet sister. But she's been doing that more and more. I guess she lives in an area that's just beautiful and it's a very kind of like a destination wedding type place. Okay. And she's just become the wedding pet concierge, if you will. So what was something from that you learned that as a professional pet sitter, you've had a lot of different things thrown at you, but did she surprise you with something about a, a dog or a cat role in a wedding? Well, yes. I mean, she told some stories where like, you know, like the dog that was supposed to be easy and is social was going to be great walking down the aisle. But then the one that, you know, reactive or whatever, he was going to be a problem. And they really had to shift that because the one that was expected to be good was not good. I mean, you're dealing with animals and you're well, dealing I'm just hoping with they didn't swallow the ring. No, 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 no. I don't know. I mean, she's done. She usually does the walking down the aisle. I think they there are some that are ring bearers. She's not big on like the dressing them up. It's just okay. a photo and then keep them comfortable. She's very she tries to balance the dream of the bride and groom with the reality of pets. OK. You know, and that's the most important thing where she's like, I think it's a great idea that your cat sit, you know, at the altar the whole time. But this is an outdoor wedding. That's not going to happen. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't super glue your kitty during your vows. Correct. Right? Exactly. That's, that's, that's what I, hey, uh, one of the gals that you had on your show, and she's a friend of mine as well, is uh, Deanna Shar from uh, down in Texas. And can you tell about her? Because she has a unique boutique in home pet business. Yes, she does. She takes dogs into her home for boarding. She is that much of a dog lover that she brings in up to 10, up to 10 dogs apart from her own to her home. And she boards them for like a, you know, like a staycation. Wow. That's got to take some organization, don't you think? And pick up the rugs. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. It's a lot of planning. And in pet sitting, it's 24 seven, but that's like yeah. another level of 24 seven because it's your home. So you don't have a separation between work and home. No, nope, you don't. That's hard. And while we were interviewing, there was barking in the background. And I was like, this is reality. This is how it works. You have dogs barking in your house who aren't used to being there. And it takes them a little bit to, you know, get comfortable. Yeah. I mean, right now I'm in my backyard office appropriately called Ard's Den. And I'm taking care of my sister's two dogs, Maddie and Jeannie. And as you know, I have my two dogs, Kona and Emma here with my three cats, Mikey, Rusty, and Casey. I promise you guys, they are not hush puppies. I just wore them out earlier today and they're all sleeping. Very nice. So that's what we do. Hey, you know, because you like to celebrate things, is there some sort of toast before we end the show you'd like to give to people? Folks, we're speaking to Isabel Alvarez Arada. She is the host of Pet Life Radio's new show. It's called Covered in Pet Hair. So I want you to dash over after the show. But this is a lady that knows how to celebrate life and handle the curveballs that are tossed her way. So if you had a toast, what would you do? Well, of course, I would toast to a life covered in pet hair because there's no better way to live. I like it. I like it. So tell people how they can get in touch and find out more about you. Well, the best way to find me is on Pet Life Radio. My show is called Covered in Pet Hair. Uh, there's also a YouTube channel dedicated to the show, and that is under the handle Covered in Pet Hair. And I'm on all um, Instagram, Facebook under the same handle Covered in Pet Hair, because really I am covered in pet hair every day. 
Hey guys, I we'll have to get uh, some vacuum cleaner to be uh, a sponsor for your show because <laughs> I think that'd be perfect. Robots are the way to go. I waited way too long to incorporate robot vacuums into my life. There you go. There you go. I think we've got a sponsor <laughs> in the making for you, right? Hey, um, we also at this time want to give a shout out to our mutual genius of Pet Life Radio. We're talking about executive producer Mark Winter. We call him the Wizard of Paws. Don't you agree, Isabel? Ooh, I've never heard that, but I like it. Yeah, he's the Wizard of Paws. And everybody, please go over and check out Covered in Pet Hair after this show. I really am glad that you could be on the show. It's nice because we're doing Zoom, right, guys? Just use your imagination. I'm seeing her beautiful little girl with many nicknames. Please go to Ardenmore.com. And for all you cat folks, check out Meowie Hour. I host it every Wednesday night live on Facebook. It is by the Cat Fancier Association. We'll have to try to get you on sometime, Isabel. And we always finish with a kitty cocktail. So I think you would be perfect for that. So we can put all cats. Yes, ma'am. I'm in. You tell me when and I'll bring my booze. All right. I like that. (laughs) Hey, guys. So until next time, this is your flea-free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave. Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.